This is Holy Land's 400S Pro video transmitter. What are the new features and how is it different from the original 400S? Let's talk about it in this video. Kia ora, good morning everyone, which is Wong here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to have a look at this Holyland 400S Pro video transmitter. In some of my previous videos, I have talked about how I use different Holyland video transmitter to help me both improve the video quality and also minimize the time that I need to spend when I'm shooting different kind of video. Quite often when I'm shooting my YouTube videos, I will use a transmitter to transmit the footage onto a bigger screen when I'm filming it. So I can make sure everything looks nice, the focus is correct and the brightness and everything looks nice and tidy when I'm filming it so I don't have to reshoot it. And also very similar thing when I'm doing some product photography, no matter it's photo or video. For example, recently when I'm shooting the uh, iFootage Shark Slider Nano reveal, I did some quick product shot. I didn't use a transmitter because I thought, oh, that's all right. I just look at it at, at the back of the screen and I shot some uh, product shots. And later on, when I review the footage on my computer screen, then I see lots of fingerprints and dust that I didn't see when I look at it at the back of the camera screen. So end up, I have to reshoot it. And this time I use a video transmitter to help me preview everything on the bigger screen. That way, I make sure there is no fingerprint, there's no dust, and everything looks nice and clean. So the result I got is pretty good and I don't have to reshoot it again. If you're not very familiar with the Holyland products, the 400 series transmitter is somewhere between the consumer and the professional series products. So a lot of professional users would use the 400 series video transmitter during the different kind of video production. So comparing this new 400S Pro with the original 400S, look at the specs. It seems to be very similar. They both have the 400 feet transmission range. They both have a metal construction. You can transmit the video footage to up to two receivers at the same time, or you can connect up to four smart devices and using the Hollyview app, you can check the footage. And also there are many other tools that is available in the Hollyview app. The 400S Pro has a lower latency compared to the original 400S and now the latency is only 0.08 seconds and also the data bit weight is also increased from 8 megabit per second to 12 megabit per second and that means the video quality that is received by the receiver should be quite a bit sharper and also higher detail compared to the original 400S. But to be honest, I never really have a problem with the latency and also the picture quality with the original 400S. And I would say most users probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the latency and the picture quality comparing the original 400S and the new 400S Pro because the original 400S is already pretty good. Now you may wonder, is there actually any difference between the new 400S Pro compared to the original 400S? After using the new 400S Pro for a couple of weeks, I noticed there are actually some pretty noticeable difference when you are using it in real life. And I'm going to talk about the difference in this video. I'm not going to go through all the features that is available on the 400S Pro because a lot of them are pretty much the same as what was already available on the 400S. So if you are not really familiar with the 400S, I would recommend you to check out my previous 400S review and you can find out most of the feature that is available on the 400S and also the new 400S Pro. The most noticeable difference between the 400S Pro compared to the original 400S has to be its design. Now the original 400S has a more conservative design that is very similar to the other Holyland products. While the new 400S Pro has quite an unusual and different design compared to most other Holyland products. First thing is it is in a more like it's a landscape shape compared to the original one, which is a portrait shape. Uh, 
I like the new landscape shape design because when you mount it on top of the camera, you make the center of gravity a little bit lower compared to the uh, the taller portrait design. So that is definitely a good thing. And the actual design, this one looks, I don't know how to describe it. And um, I, to be honest, I don't know whether I like it or not because it looks really different. It looks like something from, uh, I don't know, like an alien spaceship <laughs> or something that is very different to the original 400S, which has, uh, you can say it's more boring, but it's more what you would expect for a professional tool. So I definitely wouldn't be surprised if a lot of professional users actually prefer the 400S design. Now, while the overall look or design of the device could be a bit controversial, some people may like it, some people may not. I think there's one thing that most people should like is the new integrated horseshoe design. So there are many reasons why I think most people would like it. The first one, if you have watched some of my previous Holyland product review, I have mentioned one thing that I don't really like is the receiver and transmitter of pretty much all the Holyland product. They are completely symmetrical or I should say they are the same. The transmitter and the receiver looks pretty much exactly the same. So apart from there's some small letters print on it once a receiver and transmitter, if you just grab it and look at it quickly, you cannot really tell whether the device you grab is a transmitter or receiver. And because of that, there were many times that when I was setting up my camera, especially when I was in a hurry, I actually set up it the wrong way. I get the, um, the receiver on the camera and then the transmitter attached to the monitor. And then when I turn on everything, wondering why there's no video signal coming through to my monitor. And that's because I did the wrong thing. I put the receiver and transmitter in the wrong place. But with the new integrated hot shoe design, you can see there is a bright blue and bright red color on the hot shoe. So you can tell very easily this bright blue one is the receiver and the bright red one is the transmitter. So even though they still have the same design, but you can easily tell which one is the receiver and which one is the transmitter. So to me, that is a huge improvement when you are actually using it and you have to set up something really fast and that will greatly reduce the chance that you set it up incorrectly. And another reason why I really like this integrated hot shoe is because it is integrated, it is fixed. So I don't have to use uh, extra um, like a hot shoe mounting bracket adapter thingy when I want to attach the transmitter onto the camera. and. I don't know why, maybe just a problem that I have. I always struggle when I try to use uh, anything that use those hot shoe adapter. When I use it to mount my device onto a camera, one problem that I usually have is when I mount it on it, instead of like having it nicely <laughs> lined it up like this, with most other devices that use those adapter, my um, transmitter or any other things would always be end up in an angle like a 45 degree, 30 degree or whatever angle is and it take me forever to actually adjust it parallel to my camera. So with this integrated hot shoe because it's all fixed, I never have to worry about not being able to line up the transmitter with the camera perfectly. And another reason why I like this new integrated hot shoe is if you look at the bottom, there's already a one quarter mounting thread here. So if you want to attach this transmitter or the receiver to your gimbal or other thing using the mounting thread, then you can do it just straight away using this integrated hot shoe without having to use any extra adapter. So that just gives you more flexibility and also make it easier for you to attach this transmitter or the receiver to your other devices in many different ways. The 400S Pro can be powered by either using a Sony L series type battery or using a DC power supply, which is now located at the back of the unit. So these two are pretty much just like the same as the original 400S, but now you can also power it using a USB-C power supply which is at the back here. 
this is a new feature that is available on the 300s pro this is also now available on the 400s pro now for me i really like having that new usb-c power option because a lot of time when i use especially the receiver i just put it on my desk for me to monitor um, the footage and i always have a lot of usb-c uh, power output that is available on my desk so i don't have to worry about either using a special dc power supply or have to charge up the sony l series battery so that is a very convenient way for me to power either the receiver or the transmitter Another new feature that was available on the 300S Pro and now also available on the 400S Pro is that you can adjust the fan speed of the device. So with the 400S Pro, you can adjust the fan speed to either auto so that the device will turn on, turn off the fan according to the temperature or you can set it to low speed so you're running at a lower speed but generate lower noise or you can turn it off completely. So if you're like me who have a receiver that is just placed on the desk which is very close to the microphone then you may prefer to turn off the fan completely so that you don't capture any fan noise at all when you are filming. If you have watched my Holy Land 300S Pro review, you may remember I said something like I actually prefer the 300S Pro more than the 400S because there are a few features like the new USB power option and ability to adjust the fan speed that make it a better device for me. But one thing I didn't really like about the 300S Pro is it has a pretty small display and also the display is on the side of the device which I personally don't really know I like it or not. But with the 400S Pro, I think I definitely like the display on this 400S Pro because if you look at it, it's a very large display, much larger than the one on the original 400S and it's also right at the front and also quite center so I can see it very clearly. I can see what is the channel, what is the battery voltage and also see the connection signal strength and also the fan status. So to me, I just really like it because I can see everything so clearly and easily when I'm setting up or when I'm filming. Another new feature that is available on the 400S Pro is you can do live streaming very easily if you use a USB-C to Ethernet adapter and connect it to the receiver. Now this is one of the features I have not actually used it because I don't have the equipment for me to test it out and quite strangely I talked to a few other people who have the 400S Pro and none of them actually have tried this feature so um, I can't really tell you whether this works good or not so um, if you also have a 400s pro and you have tried it i would love to hear your experience and actual results so yeah if you have tried it please let me know by drop a comment below another new changes with the 400s pro compared to the 400s is that most of the input output ports are now moved to the back of the device the only thing that is on the side is the sdi port so if you compare it with the original 400s you can see pretty much all the input output ports are on the side of the device. Now I would say this is probably something also a bit controversial. I think some user would definitely prefer to have the IO port on the side rather than at the back. Me personally, I don't care too much because my setup is not that complicated. Having it at the back would make my setup looks a bit tidier, but obviously different user will have different requirements so as I said this could be quite a controversial changes. So overall what do I think about this new 400S Pro and also how does it compare to the original 400S? I think overall there are definitely some good improvement um, not just the higher data bit rate and also the lower latency those are definitely good one but some other changes for example the larger display and also the integrated hot shoe which is something I really like a lot. There are some other changes that I think would be a bit controversial for example the overall design of the device some people may prefer the old 400S more conservative design and also the IO ports some people may prefer it on the side compared to the one which is now all on the back with the 400S Pro. So if you are currently using the 400S 
is it worth to upgrade to the 400s pro i would say honestly i think probably not there are quite a few good improvements and overall the 400s pro is definitely a better device compared to the 400s but then the original 400s is already a very good video transmitter and there's nothing wrong with it at all so i don't know whether it is really worth spending a couple hundred dollars to buy the new one but on the other hand if you are currently using a very old or very simple video transmitter and want something a bit nicer or you are looking at buying your first video transmitter then i would definitely recommend you to go for the new 400s pro because this new large display and also the integrated hot shoe mount and also i myself i like the landscape shape design which help lower the center gravity so all these things together combined it i definitely think the 400s pro make it one of the best video transmitter in the market right now